Okay, so what we're going to do next on Webmin is we are going to use the uh, Apache module to add a new user to the server and uh, set up a, what's called a virtual host. A virtual host is a cool way for your web server to host multiple websites on one IP address. It's cost effective since multiple IP addresses usually cost you money and it's a little easier to work with. So to do that, what we're going to go ahead and do first is we're going to go ahead and add a user. To do that, under System and then Users and Groups uh, is what you'll click, and then click Create a New User. Uh, what this allows us to do um, is to, number one, isolate the website from other websites on the server uh, in case there's a PHP uh, vulnerability or something like that. You don't have to worry about one site being compromised and then spreading malware to multiple sites on your server. Another reason that you might want to do this is if you're hosting multiple websites for different clients. You'll want to have that client uh, set up to where they have their own user account, where they can receive mail, or where they can, uh, in this case, uh, have their website hosted. So uh, what I did for this little exercise is I created a fake domain and I mapped my local host file to that fake domain so that for all extents and purposes for this portion of the tutorial, it looks like it's a real website. Um, unfortunately, paceisawesome.com uh, has not been taken up yet, and I don't want to pay 20 bucks to register it. So we're going to go ahead and create the username paceisawesome here. And we're going to go ahead and leave the home directory at automatic, the user ID at automatic, the shell, it doesn't really matter because we're not going to log in via this. And we're just going to set a password here. And we're just going to leave the password as Pace is awesome here. So we'll be sure to kill this user account uh, before this video comes out so that no one logs into the server here. Uh, from here, we have password options such as uh, when the pass, uh, password expires, the maximum days that the password can be set to a specific password, uh, the minimum days, etc. Usually, you don't want to set these, especially if you're going to have a client connect to your server. You don't want to have them deal with changing their password all the time. Although, it's a good idea for security, nevertheless, in the real world, it tends to create issues when you're forcing your clients to change their passwords constantly. From here, for group membership, you can add them to an existing group um, or set up a new group with the same username, which is typically what you'll go with. Um, one advantage to setting up group membership is if you have a website that is edited by multiple logins. So for instance, you'll have a developer that logs in. You have the client themselves and you have um, uh, a web developer that logs in in addition to the script developer. Um, you'll want to give them separate user accounts to separate everyone, but put them all in the same group. In this case, PaceIsAwesome.com is just going to be the uh, same group and same user, PaceIsAwesome. Uh, so from here, upon creation, we're going to create the home directory, copy template files, and create the user and other modules. And then we hit Create. And if we scroll down here, we'll see Pace is Awesome right here. It was successfully created. The home directory is home slash Pace is Awesome. Pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to log in via our FTP client, or in this case, SFTP client, which is more secure than FTP. And we're going to go ahead and create the web directory that we're going to host this website out of. Okay, so right now I have my uh, favorite SFTP client, FileZilla, set up here. The connection here is just at PaceIsAwesome.com using the username PaceIsAwesome and the password PaceIsAwesome. Um, you can use any SFTP client that you want. And the advantage of using an SFTP client or an FTP client is it is an encrypted communication channel. So any data that you transfer or passwords that you transmit are encrypted uh, as they go across the internet. That way a uh, router or another system in between you and your web server, if it's compromised, you don't have to worry about your credentials being leaked out. 
So from here, um, I'm in my Pace is Awesome home directory. I'm going to go ahead and create a new directory, and I'm going to call it public underscore HTML. It's a pretty standard name for a web directory. Uh, this directory here will be available to the public, which means uh, basically Apache will be able to grab the web server files off of that and be able to uh, work with those. So, and then I'm going to go ahead and go into public HTML for this index file right on over to the public HTML directory. Very basic one page websites, uh, no, no frills uh, and no pizzazz whatsoever, but it's good for testing purposes. So I've transferred over the index file. Uh, one thing that I'm gonna do is check the permissions here on the, this folder, this public HTML folder. And it looks like I'm going to give folder 775. So what that basically means is that the user account is able to edit that file. Um, the group is able to edit that file but the world is not able to edit that file. So if another script from another website tries to make changes on this website, it will not be able to. And I'm gonna go ahead and check those same permissions for my home directory here. What I wanna be able to do is to read, write, and execute for me, my group, and give the public only read and execute privileges. And there we go. So this is a web account only, um, or, or, or a user account that's only used for a website. So that's why I went ahead and told it to go ahead and recurse that, just in case I missed something there on the public HTML directory. And we're gonna go ahead and close my favorite FTP client here. And we're gonna go ahead and go into the Apache configuration. Now, at this point, since we're creating files on the home directory and we're telling Apache to access those files, we might have to backtrack a little bit and talk about SE Linux. SE Linux is a way for the system to be uh, controlled at the kernel level. So what that basically means is SE Linux has a set of restrictions on it that it won't allow certain services to do things. Um, right now, we're doing something that's out of the norm so we want Apache to be able to access those files, thus we have to disable SE Linux. We can do it a few different ways. First, we can do it via simple command, um, set enforce zero, which if we were to do that via webmin here, we're gonna go over to the command shell, and it would look something like that. Um, however, on reboot, this is not going to be retained. So unless you want to go into that each time and restart Apache each time, you'll instead want to fire up the file manager. And this is all under others here. And go into etc. SE Linux. And then config. If you click on that file, you can download it. And just drag that window over here. And this is what the file looks like. Uh, so from here, in this uh, particular instance, SE Linux has already been disabled on the server. If it doesn't show disabled here, it usually will show targeted. And that's what you want to change over to disabled. From here, you can save it and then upload it. Again, using the file manager here. Um, or my personal favorite is just to hop onto the server and just edit the file manually. Uh, however, this tutorial assumes a couple of things. Number one, that you might not be comfortable navigating a uh, uh, system shell. And the other being that you probably just don't want to. Uh, that's why you want to learn Webmin to begin with. So now that we've disabled SE Linux, we're going to go to the Apache configuration again. 
and we're going to go ahead and hit create virtual host. So from here I've got it filled in for any network address on the server. We're going to go ahead and listen on all the available addresses. Port is left at the default. The document root we're going to change to home. Pace is awesome and public HTML. So we've got it set there. Server name we're going to set to pace is awesome.com. And when it says add virtual server to file, I really don't want to add it to my http.conf file. Instead, I want to add it to its own file under conf.d. These are automatically included in uh, Apache startup here. And I'm just going to call it paceisawesome.conf. And I'm going to be lazy and copy the directives from an existing website that I already have. Apply the changes. So from here, Apache's been restarted. It didn't complain about anything. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is open up an incognito window. The advantages of this when I'm doing web server testing is it doesn't store any cookies, any cache files, or anything like that. So if my website's changed and even hitting refresh sometimes doesn't reflect those changes, pop open an incognito window, and then you'll be able to see the changes on the website. So we're going to go ahead and go to paceisawesome.com. And from here, we can see that the virtual host is working. It's just that sample uh, index file that I put on there just saying how awesome I really am. So at this point with Apache we've created a virtual host we've created a user account to, um, for that virtual host as well and uh, we're serving files so we're good to go from here. Um, from here we can add additional virtual hosts if we want or what I'm going to go ahead and do is clean up after myself here. So I'm in the Apache web server configuration here I'm going to go ahead and click on the checkbox next to the virtual host paceisawesome.com and click delete. Pretty easy. I'm going to apply the apply the changes here. And now so that no one hacks my server or anything like that, I'm going to go over to users and groups and get rid of that uh, paceisawesome account which had the super secure password of paceisawesome. Uh, so from here we're going to go ahead and delete the selected users after I've click the checkbox here and then just confirming here we're deleting the user and other modules as well and I'm going to go ahead and nuke the home directory because I don't want any traces of this left. From here we can go to the file manager because we're going to confirm that everything's taken care of and wiped out there. We're going to go to the home directory and then from here we can see that the paceisawesome.com account has been removed all that we have is the empty or dev.mthikes.com account, which is hosted under the username Chris. So from there, we're good to go. If we go back to the Apache web server configuration, we can also, under the global configuration, change things such as the Apache username um, and group. Usually, you don't want to do that, though. Uh, we can also manually edit the Apache configuration file. By that, we can also drill down to the virtual host uh, file. So for instance, my dev.emptyhikes.com account is in this virtual underscore host.conf file that I created. So if I select that file and then click edit directives, this allows me to change any of the uh, directories or log file locations. Um, it allows me to add custom rules. Um, so for instance, this rule here prevents an attack uh, called the trace uh, track attack for a cross uh, site scripting vulnerability. So anytime I add a vhost, I always add that in there. If you ever have a security uh, scanner such as Nessus scan your server, it'll flag it if you don't have that on there. So uh, from there, it pre just prevents a common 
uh, method of attack. Um, but other than that, that's just about all that there is to uh, the web server configuration within Webman for Apache. Uh, you can restart the server, you can stop it, you can add virtual hosts, you can edit the virtual hosts, and you can change the existing configuration. This concludes the uh, video on editing the Apache configuration within Webmin. If you haven't already installed Webmin, you want to see the first video that I had on this series. That went over actually installing Webmin via the uh, SSH uh, shell console. Um, and then from there, uh, the rest of the videos go on the different modules that we have, such as MySQL, uh, the SSH configuration itself, etc. Um, speaking of the SSH server configuration, one possible issue that you might run into, uh, depending on which server image your server is based off of, is that whoever wrote that image might have disabled password authentication via SSH. So one thing that we can check is to go into the SSH server under the Server tab. And under Authentication, we want to make sure that Allow Authentication by Password is set to Yes. Otherwise, that might cause issues logging in via SFTP. Um, if you ran into issues with that earlier, that's the way to fix it. Well, other than that, this concludes the video. Have a great day.